Greetings. This is going to be uh, a few short videos expounding on the lunge. I want to spend the first video showing you what you should be working on when you're practicing your lunge, the different parts of the mechanics of it. I'm going to then show uh, a few videos on specifically how to do some lunging drills, how to work on those things, and how to take your lunge and advance with it, make it make it better, make it more complex. So to begin, let's go through uh, five of Capoferro's six postures that he shows. Uh, and again, these are relevant for Giganti. Uh, these are largely relevant for Fabris. Um, the first posture that I like to start with from Capoferro is his Terza. That is his third posture. That's because it's kind of the basis for a lot of what comes after this. Uh, this is the only real defensive posture. This is why he calls it the only real guard. And it's formed with your feet in a 130 degree angle, pulling your body back from the threat and holding your sword out about over, maybe slightly outside of your front knee and your hand the palm is to your inside, your knuckles are to your outside. So, terza. From terza, I'm going to go into seconda. To get to seconda, the posture, I'm going to roll my hand where my palm is down, and I'm going to keep my feet as they were, but lean forward hinge at the hips forward over my front leg. Now note that my arm is more or less over my front leg, maybe slightly off to the right. My body is leaning off into this space about here. So my body is not straight over my front leg. It is hinging a little bit past it. From seconda to get to prima, the body stays about where it is. Your hand goes up to where your palm is pointing to your outside, your knuckles to your inside. Then we'll visit quarta. Quarta, again, still your body is forward, but quarta, you bring around and your palm is up. Your sword is on the inside of your knee and you're pointing at your opponent. Again, though, your body isn't over your leg. It is hanging out here kind of in between your two feet. Now the fifth guard that I'll talk about is, uh, Faris calls it a low terza. And that is simply taking this back weighted stance and dropping your point down. So you're denying your sword. You're not letting them have the sword in a gain or in a stringer. So now I'm going to take you through the three parts of the lunge as taught by the Tattershall School of Defense. We're going to start out in terza. So we take our terza guard, defensive, back weighted guard. We're as far away from their dangerous point as we can get right now, threatening them a little bit with our own point. The first part of the lunge is to extend your sword out toward your opponent and usually, you want to cant your sword toward where theirs is. You want to cant this true cutting edge toward their sword. So this is now more threatening. The next stage is you've, you've pushed your arm out as far as you are comfortable doing so. Now your body follows it, pulls your body into a more offensive position. So if you'll note, now I'm basically in quarta, in the quarta posture. The third part is I bend this knee and extend this knee into the lunge, into finishing the lunge. So if you will note what's happening here, I'm going from terza and I'm moving through the other postures to get to the end point, to get to the lunge. So if I'm going into a seconda lunge, start here, the hand goes up, cancels a little bit into second, it pulls me at the hips, I bend my leg, 
I'm in Seconda Lunge. We'll cover back. So, three things really quickly to keep in mind, mechanically speaking, while we're working on the lunge. And these are things that you can be working on while you're practicing your lunges. The first one is how we hold our leg, our rear leg in terza. So, if I have a 90 degree angle in my feet and I go back weighted here, I feel the tension in my hip and in my knee and a little bit in the outside of my thigh. It does not like me doing this. If I rotate my knee and my foot a little further to get a basically about 130 degree angle, then all I have to do is bend my back leg and it accepts my weight. Now, I've pulled my head and shoulders away from my opponent's point. I'm simply catching my weight with this mechanically sound back knee, uh, back hinge. And I extend my sword and we're good. I can stay here for a while. It's not causing tension. It's not causing problems in my joints. The second thing I want to get at is when you are extending your arm. I don't want you to extend your arm out of socket. I don't want you to be reaching and stretching for the opponent. You simply lift your arm in terza. I'm lifting my arm. It's still in its socket. I've got a little bit of a bend in my elbow. This is a powerful position. When I go into seconda, same thing. A little bit of a bend in the elbow. My shoulder is still in its socket. I'm not reaching. I'm not pushing it out. It's still a powerful position. Quarta, I'm coming up a little bit on the inside of my knee. So my elbow for me is basically the inside of my elbow is pointing up here. But again, I'm not stretching my, my arm out. I'm simply lifting it. Uh, prima, a little more difficult for most people, myself included. You're bringing the sword up over your head puts the full weight of the sword over your head. Bearing in mind that Fabris likes all of these motions to be almost out in front. So this is his prima, whereas this is Capoferro's prima. The third thing I want to get at is the opposite, well, the same mechanics of your legs I just described in Terza, but at the end of the lunge. So when I drop into lunge, you want your foot, knee, and hip to all be in alignment. So you see my sword blade goes straight up my leg, and then if it continues, it goes up the right side of my face. This is the line you want at the end of a lunge, the ideal line. Um, you don't want to try to catch your weight over your knee when you lunge. That creates this hip jut, which causes tension in your knee. It's not a very strong position. Um, if this line in your foot and your knee comes right under your chin or close to it, then you need to correct that. You need to get that knee out to your right side. The weight of your body is basically here to the inside of your lead foot when you lunge. And that counts for both sides, left hand and right hand. So that is the more mechanically sound way of ending your lunge. All right, so last two things I really want to touch on for this video. The first one is when we go into a lunge in Capoferro and Giganti and Fabris, uh, many sword styles actually, the sword arm goes first. It's a fundamental thing. This has many reasons. One reason is by extending the sword arm first, I am controlling the space between me and my opponents. I am covering their sword. I'm forcing them to do something. I'm threatening them more. If I jump forward while I'm holding my sword back, I am not clearing the space. I'm not controlling the space. If I have a dagger, maybe, but talking single sword, if I'm not extending that sword first, I'm not defining the space between us. Therefore, I'm probably letting my opponent define it for us. The other thing 
that extending the sword first does is it allows me to wait until the very last second instant to choose my actual target. So I go from Terza. I am going through my lunge. I've extended my arm. I'm in seconda. But as my knee bends, I can roll to quarta. I can go on the opposite side of their body. So I can threaten their head, bang, and then as I continue this lunge and bend that knee, I can then drop for their belly. Because I'm not punching with my arm, because my arm's extended, it is now free to do a variety of things as my body weight brings it forward. So you only need a few pounds of pressure to poke a hole in someone or in a target. Your body weight is enough to do that for you. And if you do this mechanically, as I've described, with your knees working the right way, you are positioning your body weight and your arm strength to defend yourself while pushing into your opponent. So arm goes first, both to define the space in front of you and capture your opponent's blade if you can and because it allows you the, the time, the ability to rearrange your targets while you're still in the middle of the lunge. The last thing I want to get at is, as you start going through your lunges, you will start doing some adaptive lunges. So for instance, I may extend, I'm going to drive through on someone's outside, but I'm going to step just past them. What you can't see with this camera angle is my knee and my toe are still going up the right side of my body. I didn't just cross my leg over. So this, the knee and the toe, are actually coming up the left side of my body. But I carried my entire weight and landed as if I was shooting straight forward. Same concept if I'm closing off on the inside line and I step off out here, again, I'm in line. Same concept if I am doing a reverse lunge. If I am going to go from terza to a forward leaning stance and then drop my back leg, I still want to be mechanically sound. If I'm going to do a full pass back, I still want to land in a mechanically sound way. So as you are starting and ending your lunges, make sure your legs and your knees are working for you and not against you. All right, the next few uh, videos, I hope to show you some drills where you can take what I, we've just talked about, start building on it, start looking at your own structure and correcting it, and then build it into a more, a more dynamic series of drills that you can play with and learn to visualize where your opponent might be and how to lunge at them.